Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Well, I hope you don't mind. Grandma's gonna. Grandma is going to. Uh, we already thank the Lord for our food. And like I said, we have some leftover potatoes from yesterday's supper. We have some biscuits. I had boiled the potatoes originally. Had them boiled. And I wasn't feeling too. I wasn't. There's there's a, your taters. Uh, Grandma wasn't feeling good for a couple days, but I feel a lot better now. I don't know what it is about certain foods. They taste even better the next day. And then we have our chick, our chicken, our baked chicken. The only thing put on the chicken when I baked it was the adobo, the Goya adobo. Hold on. I'm sorry. This right here. What I did is I bought, I bought 10 pounds. I bought 10 Lady Dark Sky. Hey, Simply Malu. Uh, thank you, Simply Malu. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Brother Marquise. Yeah, it's just very simple, brother. I just wanted to just have it just the chicken because my stomach is doing flip-flops and I would lay back and my stomach was all kinds of upset. And so I was taking, taking everything backwards, trying to figure this out. I say, all right, I'm not, I'm going to see, I'm going to eat very light. I'm going to drink a lot of water. I'm going to take in my apple cider vinegar because that is really good for your gut health. Apple cider vinegar is uh, for me. I'm just going to put it this way for me. Do talk to your doctor about any changes. Talk to your physician about anything different you are choosing to eat or drink, my friend. Apple cider vinegar for my stomach, it's good for weight loss, allegedly. And when I take it, I feel like I have a little more energy and I feel a little more evenly, evenly keeled. Allegedly, apples. One of the ben, allegedly, one of the benefits of apple cider vinegar. It can regulate blood sugar. You got to be very careful with the things that you take, but that's what it does for me. So, I had oatmeal. Plain potatoes. One day I just had scrambled eggs with a biscuit or with a couple of biscuits. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm looking at exactly what I'm eating and exactly what my stomach can take. You see, I, I, ha I had to kind of roll backwards on purpose. I did not eat breakfast. I did not eat lunch. And I let my stomach from what I felt completely empty and then threw water and apple cider vinegar on top of an empty stomach. I'm just trying to go through the whole thing. Now, this is just me. You don't have to do what I do. But I was just trying to go backwards and trying to figure this out. I did not want to go to the doctor. <laughs> but that stomach, that stomach was feeling pretty bad. Thank you, Simply Malu or Melu. Yeah, I'm sorry that I had to end the broadcast, but there's no sense in staying on the air if you can't see or hear anything. You know what I'm saying? I felt that to be very, uh, very unfair. But yeah, this doesn't have really any coating on it. I say, okay, I'm not even going to put the coating on there. I'm just going to bake it just with this. 
I got the 10 pounds of chicken legs like I always do. I know this is not the most exciting conversation. Ooh, I got this. <laughs> I got the 10 pounds of chicken legs like I always do. And then I sprinkled, I got them over to the sink and everything. And then I sprinkled this on it, kind of pre-spicing. And then I put three chicken legs or so per bag with this on it. And then I put that in the freezer, out of the, out of the freezer, into the baking dish, into the oven, just let it slow bake tastes pretty good. And then you can take the meat off this bone if you choose to and do whatever you want, your chicken salad or whatever, or if you want to chop chicken up and put that in an omelet, you want to chop chicken up and put some onions and peppers and whatever you like in chicken salad. And you can have a chicken salad sandwich. That's how the old woman you're looking at saves a lot of money. I get big amounts of things and then you and save money because I bought a lot of it. And then I break that up and use it for many different things. With the Chick-fil-A sauce on top, oh my goodness. Thank you, Felicia Quinn. Thank you, Marquise Payne. Thank you, Simply Melu, M-A-L-O-U. Thank you so very much for visiting Simply Melu. Yeah, I did not expect everyone to come back, and it's okay. Just for a few more minutes, if I could. Just for a few more minutes, if I could. It's Sunday night. You really don't expect to have a lot of people come to your channel, especially the kind of channel that I have. You, 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 I, I have no, I have no unrealistic expectations when it comes to my YouTube channel. I just face the reality. I know who I am, who I am and what I do. Yeah, Brother Marquise, I'm not gonna lie. When my stomach was doing flip-flops the way that it was, it was pretty bad. I feel a lot better. I don't know what that was. <coughs> and I am like a big baby. I'm not going to front. When something different happens in my body, I feel a pain. Do you know the worst thing you can do is go on Google? <laughs> Go on Google and say your stomach hurts or your foot hurts or something. They got all kinds of deadly diseases and things. You know, when you, if you type, I got a sore back and put that in Google, the most frightening things pop up. You think it's, you think you're going to die or something like tomorrow. Oh my goodness. I said, son. Uh, your mother was in, I was talking to my son about it. And I said, I did one of the worst things I can do. I went to Google. He goes, mom, that's the worst thing you can do. Google will have you thinking all kinds of things. They put a list of the worst possible things that can be wrong with you. I like them baggy because I flop around. Oh, grandma Lynn, if you come across some of those old fashioned nightgowns, when you go to Goodwill, a size 2X? Yes, I will. I will, I promise. I will. Now you got me thinking. 2X or larger? Okay. Bet. Oh, yes, ma'am. You're welcome. I forgot what I sent you. I sent you something. We were on live, remember? And I was on in Goodwill and I asked you, I said, do you like this thing? And you're like, yeah. I said, okay, we're go I'm going to get it for you. So we'll have a look. The red and back throw over. Okay. You know what we got to do? Sorry, I'm chewing. 
I'm chewing with my real and fake teeth at the same time. <laughs> no, we'll do. My check comes. I'm looking at the date. In about 10 days or so, Lady Dark Skies. In about 10 days, my check is coming. And I think YouTube is kicking in on the 21st. What we need to do, what I'm going to, what I'd like to do is we're going to go to the store live. Okay. Keep in mind, it's going to be on my cell phone, but we'll bring the stuff home and then we'll turn on the, uh, turn on this, this uh, webcam. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the, we'll do the live, we'll do a, like a live shopping for Lady Dark Sky thing. Okay. We'll go into the, into the, um, into the Goodwill. There's another store too. I got to take you in. We'll do it live. And then you can get a look at stuff before I put it in the, I kind of get an idea of what you like. Yeah. The native deodorant lasts for 24. For me, it lasts for exactly for me. Let me see. I put it on In the early afternoon, I get up at noon or one o'clock. I stay up to four in the morning, three in the morning. My time clock is all messed up. So let's say I get up, I take a shower, I put it on about noon. I'm good from noon that day. I can go to bed. Let's say I don't take a shower. I took a shower during the day. I put on my pajamas. I go to bed and in the morning... I still smell okay, but you can tell it's starting to break a little bit. I can conservatively say that native deodorant, it'll last about 18 hours for about 18 hours for me, pretty much a whole day. It's better than anything I've ever tried. The other stuff, I end up smelling worse with the one and the other was just too greasy. Vintage nightgowns. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The old school. We're going to have a look, Lady Dark Sky, and see what they got. Yeah, my mother used to wear like the Moomoo type. The mumu type of, uh, and it would be th like this, this long on the arms. And it would be shaped like the sleeve would be shaped like a, a triangle cut off at the top, the sleeve, right? So it would be a sleeve that was like a fan sleeve. And it comes out like the letter A, like the letter A. Sometimes you have snaps in the front and sometimes buttons in the front. And usually it's made out of cotton and it hits you at the knee or longer. Let a shape nice and baggy, like a tent shape. I like that. Now that's just me. Just you put this thing on, it covers everything and you feel like you're not wearing anything. It's light. You don't want anything that sticks to you. Anything that's nylon is okay in the winter. It'll keep you warm. But you want a cottony, a cotton blend or something cotton that's breathable. Because we sweat. You know how ladies, we ladies are. We sweat at night. and We need something airy and comfortable. So... I think this will be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it. You have the long sleeve on. Okay. And then pre retirement day says here in Minnesota, flannel nightgowns. Exactly. I think I have one or two that are flannel that are very thick. Hey, Jazzy Joyce. Good evening. Just dropping in. Hi, everyone. Greetings. I tried the deodorant, expensive, but really liked it. Th 
Thanks, Lady Lynn, for letting me know about it. You're very welcome. My son, look, a man told my son, my son told me about it. And he also says that that a thank you, pre-retirement days, comfort food and more for updating to Fantabulous Friends number three. Thank you so very much for blessing me and my granddaughter. Well, you bless me and my granddaughter with that. Thank you. And my outdoor kitty cats. Everything comes together. Thank you so very much. Thank you for listening to the Etsy. Yes. Hold on. Let me look at it. Let me look at it. Yes. Yes. I don't know if I can, I can't show it, but yes. Okay. Okay. Now I get it. Yep. I see it. I just clicked on it. Yeah. That can be that. Yeah. I see those. Sometimes I see them in the Goodwill. And then also there's a little, I don't know the name of the store. It's very small. I have to go in there. I have to bring you there. 2X, I'll be on the lookout. Trust me. Trust me, Lady Dark Sky. I, I Now that I know. You have a white one and one from Grandma. Okay. We need to get you hooked up with three or four more. We're going to go in there together. That's okay, Brother Marquise. Brother Marquise, you have a family. You, you, have, you have to go to work and stuff. I'm just grateful for anybody that comes in. You know, I I am Jane Doe Average Channel, and I, I understand. Well, thank you for coming in. I knew that when I went off the air, if there were, I knew that when I went off the air from the first live stream, if I had 20 people, I expected maybe five or six to come back. And that's all right. Uh, because of all of you, because of all of you, YouTube is going to be paying me. It skipped a month or two, it skipped for a month or two, and that's all right. I did that kind of on purpose. I did that a little bit on purpose because I wasn't on the air. I was not on the air. Remember, I wasn't on the air for seven or eight days or whatever that was. I knew that I that YouTube would not be uh, uh, kicking in, and that's all right. But I've done a couple of live broadcasts and uh, some itty bitty short videos, and when you do that, you start to get a uh, my itty bitty views, you know. When you go live on the laptop, YouTube automatically monetizes, which it can be a pain in the butt for those of you when you first come in, there's a commercial. But the mistake, as uh, my friend Judy Mae Collins was saying, she goes, if you don't, if you don't monetize, you want to make sure that your hours are counting toward monetization so that whenever it adds up, you'll, you know, YouTube will, your YouTube payment will come in. I had been not monetizing until after the broadcast and that was hurting me. <laughs> I didn't realize that. And it's not that I'm being greedy or, or, you know, or anything like that. It's just that grandma can use a little, you know, whatever little help you can get, you get. And so I didn't think you all would get mad at me if I did that. <laughs> but if, if it can, I wanted to let you know also the over, the over, I could not believe this, but over 50 and blessed channel. They love that video, the Sophia Loren video. It's only a few seconds long. 
my the I won't say my the Sophia Loren is 88 years old, the actress. So there's this video going around on the internet. She's coming out of a, of a place. She's going into her car, the car that they're holding for her. She's 88. So I, I, got a, a, I got a piece of that video and I put it on my over 50 and blessed channel. I put snippets of old TV shows for 10, 15, 30 seconds on over 50 and blessed. That video, a short, has over 62,000 views. It's just a short. Through that short video and the Uncle Phil video, I now have on over 50 and blessed 777 subscribers. Unbelievable. So there's a possibility if I chose to, if I get to a thousand subscribers and there is a thousand, 3000 hours of watch time and 777 subscribers on over 50 and blessed, which means there's a possibility three or four months into next year by April or May of next year, there's a possibility that over 50 and blessed, if I chose to apply for it, could be monetized. That would be very interesting. So we'll see what happens. It's still hot here. It's, it's still, I don't understand. Well, I'm on the West Coast. I'm on the West Coast and I'm surprised. I'm surprised at the weather here in Oregon. It drives me crazy because you are in the summer and in the, in the summer, it's very hot unbearably hot, like it's Arizona or something. Like it's like it's Arizona or something. And you, you know, and I, I do not like it being that, I don't like it being that hot. And then it's finally, it's September. And it was 80 degrees here. It can stop whenever it's ready. Starting next week, for the next two, uh, let's see, today's the last hot, hot day. Chick-fil-A chick sauce. I'm being naughty. My left hand is my weaker hand. There we go. So finally, we're going to get into the weather, that uh, this part of the year and the weather, the weather that I absolutely love is when it is in when it is in the 70s when it is in the 70s then here in Oregon it gets very windy like we had gusts about a week ago 24 miles an hour to 45 mile per hour winds i love that <laughs> maybe not 45 but i do not like it when i wake up and my little itty bitty rectangle feels like an oven. And you go outside, and this is not an exaggeration. Those of you in the heat of summer know what I'm know what I'm talking about. You know how you open your oven to go turn something around or take something out? The heat of the oven hits you in the face. If you have glasses on, they fog up, that kind of heat. That's what it feels like here when it gets really hot. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, grandma doesn't like that. I'm just saying, I don't like feeling that uncomfortable. And you, you could be in a pair of short shorts or a 100% very thin cotton dress. And you are hot as you know what. 
but this is the time of year that grandma loves. Starting tomorrow, it'll be 77, 77 during the day and 59 degrees at night. You don't need the air conditioning and then it's breezy. So you just open up the bedroom window here and the bathroom window and the air just moves around. It's perfectly comfortable. I was about ready to move. I'm not lying. I was ready to go back, go back to the other end of the country. I was so uncomfortable. Because like sister was saying earlier, she said, we didn't get much of a summer. It's cold already. In Oregon, it's the same thing. It doesn't segue gently from one to the other. Pretty soon, the 70s will stop and it'll, boom, it'll be 40 degrees. And then it'll just get cold and stay that way. It does, <laughs> there isn't a nice gentle segue from one season to the other, at least in my town here in Oregon. Felicia Quinn says Texas is still hot. Pre-retirement days, comfort foods, and more. It does feel like Minnesota is going to get an early winter. But I am hearing we are supposed to have above normal temps this winter. Yeah, and you know what? I'm getting sick and tired. Please don't get mad at me. I am kind of getting kind of tired of hearing about glo global warming. Could they just stop saying that? Could they just stop talking about global warming? It was hot in New Haven, Connecticut, just like it was here in New Haven, Connecticut, and in upstate New York, the summers were hot, and the summers were humid. In Connecticut in the 70s, hot and humid summers. In upstate New York, hot and humid summers. And then when winter came in upstate New York, I was two hours, I lived two hours from Canada and we got feet, 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 you know, not inches, but feet. You go to North Carolina, you got uh, inches, uh, a few inches, but nothing in my humble opinion has really changed. They keep coming up with all these different ideas and things. I, I I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just I'm just sick and tired of all these people saying these different things. And I'm sick and tired of the media. trying to control the narrative. The media is nothing but a bunch of human beings with microphones and cameras. Now you're trying to give me a perspective. You're trying to give me your perspective. You can make anything look like anything. Remember that video? That woman was saying that there was flooding. This was years ago. And she's saying, oh, yeah, there's all this flooding. And she's standing there and she's acting like it was flooding. And it was live. It was a live feed. And behind her, two people were walking by. Two people were walking behind her. She was trying to make it appear like it was really flooding. There was a lot of rain, but there was no flood exactly where she was. You see what I'm saying? It was really funny to see. I believe that, yes, we are having weather catastrophes and stuff like that. But I don't trust mainstream media. I believe stuff that I can see in person. 
And I believe some of what they say, but not everything. Especially the uh, I'll st- I'll be I'll try to be careful. Especially the the closer we get to the election, the closer we get to the election, the more the more you, you notice there's no happy stories. I'm getting sick and tired of them. Did you see? The picture of 92-year-old, I think she's 92, 92 92-year-old Senator Feinstein, Senator Feinstein, a woman. They had her, oh my gosh, if you would have seen that, they're trying to hold on to control so bad, this poor woman. She's 92 and she looks so terrible. And no disrespect, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about sickly, like sick, ill sick. I'm going to find that picture. Diane Feinstein. Have you seen Diane Feinstein lately? Baby, I'm not being mean. You you are unmerciful and evil to put that woman in a wheelchair. She's looking all like this, literally looking like this. I don't know how you just like just like with the president. I don't know how you can do that. I don't know how you can see. I'll be quiet about this. I'm let's not talk. I'm not talking about politics at all, whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, a Green Party person, an independent person, or whether you could give two cares about you don't even care about politics. I'm talking about I'm talking about human beings. Excuse me. Where you see it's obvious this woman is on her last leg by looking at her. Excuse me. And you're trying so hard to have another uh, another democratic vote that you're just wheeling this woman that looks rather sickly. She looks emaciated and she's like this and she's in a wheelchair like this. And you're wheeling her into the White House. Whether you like Biden, you don't like President Biden. Let's not talk about him as a president. We'll talk about him as a human being. I'm looking and this man, he's not there by what I'm seeing. I'm looking at him. I saw four or five videos where he comes up to the podium and he walks past the podium. He is falling down. We saw the fall down of the plane. He is like, he's on a bike. He falls off a bike and he said, and then he's on one video. He's on one video and he says, well, they told me, oh, I got to They told me he says it. What happens at a certain point, you have a filter, you have a filter up here. I have, by the grace of Almighty God, for now, I still have a filter. The filter is kind of like this. A person is, this is going to be stupid. I'll shut up in a minute about this. A person is wearing a purple, a green, and a lime green, a red dress with stripes and circles and stars. They have a, a, a pantyhose. One leg is green and one leg is blue. And it's all ill-fitting. One sleeve is long and one sleeve is short. And they look ridiculous. Spilling stuff on myself. The filter part of you, the filter part of you, what do you think? What do you think of my dress? Well, if that's something you like, that is something that I would not wear. I don't really like that. But if you like it, Hey, you know, you have to wear it. You might, your filter might go that far. Now, if it's your daughter, 
or your very best friend or your sister filter comes off. You look, that is the ugliest thing. That has got to be the ugliest dress I've ever seen in my 63 years of living. You know what I mean? Filter, the filter is what I just said. So President Biden, in my humble opinion, because of what's going on up here, his filter is 95% gone. That's why he says things like that when he says, they tell me, to, they tell me I got to read this. Oh, I don't want to get them met. He says it. He says what's up here. It just, it, that just comes out. He does not have the filter. So if I was Mrs. Jill Biden, I would say, baby, that's it. You know, I would talk to all these people. I'm sorry, that's it. You're going to have to get another Democrat, another Dem There's plenty of people out here that you can groom. My husband is not doing well. You see that he, he is slowly declining. Same for Ms. Feinstein. Where is, if Ms. Feinstein has children or a family, where are they? I'm sorry that my grandmother, no, no, no. We're not doing this anymore. She, she, it, it, by she's 92 or whatever the age is. Come on now. This is all I'm saying. Y'all got to stop this now and just l let the, let them retire. Let them retire for the sake of, I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about human beings and their health. Mrs. Biden, you need to do something for your, uh, that's your husband, Mrs. Biden. Do something for your husband. Stop making him look like a, stop allowing people around him for the sake of having a Democrat, if you will, to have him looking like a total, a total donkey to the world. That's all I'm saying. Right, says Felicia Quinn. There are families, the responsible common sense family member. Yeah, where are they, Felicia? Yeah, something's wrong with them, Kara. I, I'm not being politically. I'm not politically. I'm not talking politics at all. I'm talking about the way they, you know, you just look at them. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find this, if I can. Give me just a moment. I think that I, I saw something the other day. It just scared the, but it just scared me. If I can show, now this will, oh, wait a minute. Come on now, come on, come on, please. I gotta do it this way, I apologize. We're gonna go in a few minutes. I want to, uh, Okay. If I can do this. One moment, please. 
I apologize. My my cell phone, that's why it's pixely or whatever, because it's very slow. This is her. First, I'm going to show it small so you can see the name. Let me just make this big. So you can see her name. See, it says Senator Feinstein. You can see that, right? I have to tilt it so it's not Senator Diane Feinstein. See that? Okay, I want to do it right so you don't think I'm playing around. This is her now. This is her. You see that picture there? Do you see what I'm saying? This poor, this, 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 is, this is her. I'll move out of the way. That is Senator Dianne Feinstein. Now that right there is a that 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 and it says that's in May, in the month of May. Senator Dianne Feinstein returned to the US Senate on Wednesday. It came after nearly three months away from Washington due from complications from a shingles infection. Several fellow Democrats call for her to resign arguing her absent imperiled their party's agenda. Now, how old is she? Just a moment, please. I wanna try to get a, a more of a, a if I can just get this, uh, I apologize for the silence. I'm just trying to get one fact and I'll stop. There are, and then, uh, oh yeah, she's 90. It says that, see there, it says she's 90. She's 90 years old. And the other person, the other person, you saw the video where he froze. You saw him freeze. This one. That guy right there is Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell was in the middle of talking. He just sort of froze like he wasn't there. And then it, it happened again like he's, something's going on. They think he had a stroke. He is... How old is this guy? Mitch McConnell is 81 years old. He's 81. One last thing. I'll shut up in a minute. Oh. No, I want to know. I want to know this right here. Before we go on, hold on. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Yeah, Francis Paul. And I think it said that Mitch McConnell is worth $35 million 
and his wife is worth about 30 million. And I showed you the other day, I, that's why I like to show it on my phone so you can see it, where, um, where uh, Nancy Pelosi was worth over $200 million. That's what can happen when you, when you are on the inside. A lot of these uh, that are 80, and like I said, she's 90 and McConnell is 80. And there's a lot of them that want, they don't want to give up. They don't want to give up the, uh, the pride steps in. They, 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 they don't want to give up that power, but they don't, it's kind of weird to me that you can be between 80 and 90 years old and still have the urge for that control and power and still maybe are very much interested in the money. When you know, doggone well, when you look at the average age of a human being, how long people live, I think it said the average for a woman was 80. Was it 80 or so? was it was it 80? Yeah, I don't have to even go over there to that. But yeah, it, 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 I talked about this before. I'm really amazed that like the person will be in power or there'll be a celebrity and they'll be in their 70s and they're still doing whatever it is. They're doing movies and they just can't, they just have to have that money. They're comfortable. They got a house in Paris. They got some something on an island somewhere. And maybe they have a home in New York and the East Coast or something like that. You know, they've got enough money and a nest egg where they can earn enough interest to pay the taxes. And because of they are of a certain earnings or a certain tax bracket, at least when they're earning, they pay less taxes, but they're sitting really well. And they have an income if they were to retire from the stock market. They invested in Apple in Apple when it at its infancy. They invested in Xerox and Kodak and all these companies in their in, in store, uh, you know, all this uh, in BlackRock. And they could literally sit back and relax. You're 78 years old, you're 82, and you can sit down and someone can bring you your breakfast, lunch, and dinner and clean your house. And you can just sit out with some umbrella drinks or a cup of coffee and relax. You can travel. But something within you, I just have to be in the limelight or I, I, I just feel a sense of belonging and I love the, the public spotlight and I, I, I just, there's something in the person where they just can't, the thought of just sitting back and being out of the public, out of the limelight is just very saddening to them. They, they can't let go of that power. Miss Oprah Winfrey, I'm not trying to beat up on her, but she's worth over, I think she's worth about 200, 200 to 250 billion, billion. She, she could sit back, you know, and, you know, she's got her investments, her land, you know, she could have others. She could keep an eye on. She can keep an eye on what's going on with her. Uh, she's got a magazine. I don't know if the magazine still exists, but she still has the O the o, o W N network. So she can literally just step down and just relax. But just that power, they they can't let go. They can't just put it down. Oprah doesn't need another bobble or, or she doesn't need anything. She has every, everything. But she doesn't have the most valuable thing that she could need. She doesn't have him. A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. She doesn't have him. She doesn't have the real one. She's got the, the God that she created in her own mind. She's got a God she created in her own mind where if you think about it, you can manifest things. That that I forget what they call that, that movement 
where they say, if you think really, really hard about, you just think about it, just think about it, think about it, think about it, it'll magically appear. I forget what they call that group of people that do that. Yeah, hey, Gary, Gary Lee M. Right, those wicked people are never, yeah. And that's what I tried to express. New age, I think that's it, retirement days. I think that's exactly it. Yeah, where you can, you know, I can sit and write down, I could write, I write this down from my head and I ask God for something, I'm seeking after it. But then I just step back. And then I, I, I'm asking him about it and I'm hoping on it. And then I tell you, hey, I've been praying for this. Please join me in prayer for this. And we pray and we pray and we pray. And maybe six months later, you know, you're saving whatever, which way you're going to do this. But there is no way that you and me can say, oh, you know, oh, I see it now. I got a two. I got a 2024 you know, fifty-five thousand uh, dollar Ford uh, Ford F one hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's got extended cab four by four. Okay, come on, everybody, let's think about it. And, and you know, and I'll go outside and it'll be sitting there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, come on now, stop playing games with him. He's going to let you have it. Guess what he's going to tell me? He's going to say, if you want that, what you can do, Lynn, is you know that you can earn a certain amount of money without them deducting from your Social Security. So, Lynn, if you really do want a new vehicle, guess what you're going to do? You're going to go get a part-time job, and that job is solely for the vehicle. You'll work four hours a day. You'll work three eight-hour shifts. You'll pull after taxes. After taxes, Lynn, you'll pull about $200 a week on an itty-bitty little part-time job. Two, four, six, eight. That's $800 a month, and that'll pay for your new vehicle and for your auto insurance going up. And you can work that part-time, Miss Miss Lynn. Lynn, you can work that part-time job until you pay off that vehicle. By the time you pay it off, it will have aged four, four years, five years, whatever the loan is. And then you can uh your auto insurance will have gone down. It's gonna be reasonable, it's gonna go up, but because of your age, it'll be fair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can see it now, preach. I can see it now. No, you go out there. You gotta go. You got. You gotta go get it. Go get it if you. If that's what I really want, that's what I have to do, and that's life. Come on now. But my vehicle at the moment, God, uh, thank you, Lord. And my vehicle is getting me from point, my vehicle is getting grandma to, to Walmart, to Tim's house, to Walmart, Tim's house, all the little stores along that strip where Walmart is, to every six months or whatever the time frame is on my sticker to get my oil changed. We're fine. But that's how you do things. That's how Jane and John Doe, that's how we do things. That's how we get it done. We get our butts out there and we go get it. You go, you go earn it and go get it, which is what some of you are doing right now and some of you have done because you're retired, and which is what I did for 48 years about. That's all. That's all you do. Hey, Nez Lover. Yeah, that's all I got to do. Oh, trust me, I've been thinking about it. I can get a factory job. I can get a part-time cleaning job. I know I can get a part-time cleaning job. Sure, I could. I could get a little part-time cleaning job. Go over there and get take a look at a 2000 and... What is it going to be, 2024? Take a look at a 2021 truck. Something with 
30,000 miles on it, 20,000, whatever. Just get that little part-time job, making sure I make under, just make the limit or whatever it is. And then that will not affect my social security. You're allowed to earn a certain amount of money. Then of course I got to do taxes again that year. Well, yeah, there's all kinds of ways to get what you want. If you really want something, you really want something, there's a way to do it now. You can have tag sales. You could have a yard sale. You can sell on Etsy. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. There's all, please. There's all kinds of ways to get some money if you really want it. Come on now. There's people that do that do tag sales. They, they do that all summer long. And they only do it in spring until the end of fall. They have the same group of people around here that have tag sales, garage sales. Everybody consolidates together. And in a weekend, they'll pull in two, three, four hundred dollars in a weekend. And that's a seasonal thing that they do. There are other elderly people. They just said they have a big old garden with just tomatoes and just peppers. And they put their stuff out, you know, in the early evening or whatever for people that are getting out of work. Or they're open all weekend and they have a little itty bitty part time business. So, hey, they're going to earn uh, extra besides their uh, Social Security. They're going to pull another twelve thousand dollars a year. And that can be for anything that can be set to the side for a vacation that can be set to the side to pay off a vehicle or that can be just set to the side for extra food that freezer that you want, that upgrade that you want. You're trying to, you know, do something with your garage. You're trying to get new cabinets. There's all kinds of ways to do this thing. And it doesn't have to hurt your back either. There's so many ways to get money. Yes, you can. I hope I'm talking to and helping somebody. Oh yeah, there's side hustles. Come on, y'all. There's all kinds of side hustles we can do. And the easiest side hustle is a garage sale, boo-boo. Go in that closet. You know you're not wearing all those things. The things you have not worn for two years, you're not going to wear. You got some nearly new stuff, some stuff with still with the tags on it, boo-boo. Come on. And then give your children and your friends a phone call. Give them a ringy dingy. And some of the stuff they don't want that we're going to throw away, but they're good things. Ooh, lay out some tables. Go to the bank and get 30 single dollar bills and some change and some fives and tens. And just get the little pouch. Get your get your little pouch zipper thing, your fanny pack. And just sit back and let, let the money come to you. Come on now. Yeah, if you want something, it's going to cost you four or $5,000. There's a way to get it. And, and like I said, you don't have to break your back. You, you don't necessarily have to go get a job. You get something and you keep an eye on the taxes, the income, and then prepare. You got to take a 30% or whatever the percentage is out. If you're doing something at home, take the percentage out for taxes. Just put that in your little savings account. And when tax time rolls around, you don't have to be scared. You have all the tax money set to the side and then you've had the money that you earned. But there's ways to make money. There's a lot of people on Etsy. And if it's an itty bitty little, if it's an itty bitty little uh, tag sale, you know, $50, you made $50 or $80. You don't have to worry about that. I have experienced in so many, I have experienced some pre-retirement days, comfort foods and more. I have experienced so many miracles in my life. No one will ever be able to tell me there is no God. Amen. Oh, I watched my sister come out of a coma. Me and Aunt, me and Alan were talking about that just yesterday or the day before. Pre-retirement days, comfort foods and more. Like the size nine clothes I have in my closet. Thinking I'm going to lose weight. Oh, I got some size eights. They're ridiculous. Oh, trust me, pre-retirement days. We all have that. But you know, some some young girl or some older woman that size, man. If you if you got three or four tables worth of things, hey, if you're looking, you're if it's just for me. Let's just a per not you a pre-retirement days and not me. Just a person. Sister has got all this stuff. 
I'm looking at if I have not worn those sandals in two years and the bottoms of them look brand new, sister, I'm not going to wear those sandals. I have, I'm just an emotional thing. Well, I might, I might wear them. No, I know you're not, Lynn. You're not going to wear the sandals. You are not a size eight. Come on now. Man, if you look through your cupboards, you got three or four uh, little things, little doodads, some potato masher, chopper. There's certain things that are in the back of your cupboard right now. You have not used that thing in four years. It's sitting in the back. <laughs> the chopper, chop, the handy chopper. <laughs> you know, that's money. That's money, boo-boo. Come on, chop. Come on, man, if you were to gather all that stuff out of the garage and in your cabinets and then you talk to your neighbor, if you're on, you're in a good relationship with them, you talk to two or three of your neighbors say, hey, look, I've been thinking. And y'all have a little, you and the ladies or you and the gentlemen or whatever, you know, have a little chit chat. And then you just work together and you put the, they, you can get the little name tag things from the Dollar Tree. And then you know how they do. They'll put $5 and they'll put their initials and then they'll have a little, they'll have an, I've seen the ladies do it. They have a tablet and they'll have the names divided or each on a page. And then as the things sell, you know, and then the money's divvied out. Okay. You sold 15 items. Here's everything written. You've sold 15 items. You sold $108 and 49 cents and she gets that. And Sissy Mary Lou sold two hundred and eighty dollars, and you know even furniture, even furniture. You got this that end table that's in the extra room, whatever. I'll shut up now. I'm just I'm just blabbing. We're just chit chatting. Walgreens buy certain when it's on sale. The week that you, yeah, you know something, Vernell, I went over for the first time earlier in the broadcast, as you saw, I went down to that store. I even forget the name of it, Do Dollar or whatever, Dollar General. And they had, right now, they got, of course, their fall rakes and shovel, rakes and shovels in there and all this stuff. Pretty soon, Vernell, all those prices are going to drop. So as we've talked about on this channel, I'm preaching to the choir to about 90% of you. In the winter, we, in the winter or toward winter, there's going to be a lot of leftover summer shorts. There's going to be the, the, the inflated things for the grandkids, the floaty things. All that summer stuff is going to be, it's, it, we're coming into fall. So now the thing that you were looking at, you did not want to pay $29.99 for that light jacket. Now it's sitting in the back on that circle rack in the back. It's $8.99. Now you can run back there and get it. Get it on sale. Brand new. I love sales like that. It's like this thing here. This. I just wore this because I'm out on the street, you know, but I have this underneath. This right here, yeah, th this is what we need to get rid of. But I digress. <laughs> this right here, this right here, $2. Let, let me try to hide my pregnant belly. Go like this. <laughs> but yeah, this was $2. And I got this also online on walmart.com online. But this was $2. This is brand new. This is the first time I wore it was today. And I got it, I think, in the fall. Or I think I came in. I came online live. And I was showing you it was fall or something last year. Oh, yeah. I love getting stuff like this dirt cheap. But, yeah, I like this covering. I wore this. See through anything? Cover, co cover up a little bit. You feeling me? I don't like being on the street all, you know. Come on. I forgot where I got this. I think I got, I forget where I got this from, but I really like this thing. Which way do I have it? I 
I thank you, Lord. It goes, see there's poncho. It's a see-through poncho. I got to wash it now. I got a stain on it from my food. <laughs> but yeah, it just goes over. As you can see, it goes over like that. So if you if you got if you if you're dealing like me with this, if you're dealing with this, <laughs> just do that. You see there? You can still see it, but you, you know it does it's not as noticeable. <laughs> is that is that a little bit too TMI? <laughs> but yeah, you can still look good with a bell a big old bit. Well, I point to me. I can still look all right with a big old belly sticking out a little bit. Oh, there are ways to cover it up, boo boo. We, we, we of the belly of the belly persuasion. We of the belly sticking out, our tummy, tummy sticking out like that. Oh, we got all kinds of ways to cover that belly. <laughs> oh yes, indeed. That's what I tell people all the time. When you're of a particular age. You put on some weight, or you you know you we're getting you know a little bit wrinkly or whatever. There, there's no reason that you can't kind of put something together and look all right. You know what I'm saying? There, there's there's you know there's all kinds of designs now. If I can talk to somebody, if you're feeling bad about the way that you're shaped or something, you know you see me. Come on now. There's all kinds of ways, if you're extra sensitive and worried about your body shape, that you can wear different coverings and different shirts and blouses and me with the see-through poncho, with the see-through, and it looks kind of cute off the shoulder. You see, it looks kind of cute. See? Come on, ladies. Come on. You can be a 3X and a 4X, you can be big and you can still look nice. Come on, ladies. I'm probably, I can easily do a 2X. I can do a, a 3X blouse. It'll be a little bit loose. A 2X, probably a size 1820. Probably about an 1820. I can squeeze into an 18 now. But yeah. But this is the first meal I'm having today. You see, I'm just eating regular food. But I'm going to, I'll see how I'll see how my back and my feet feel. We walked for what? About an hour? We walked for an hour. We have our we have our cold water. I'm taking my apple cider vinegar, my Vita Vita Vegemins. If I feel good tomorrow, I may skip a day, do it every other day to start. We'll see. I'd really like to go out every day for an hour. Doesn't mean I'll turn the camera on every time. But I figure from 30 minutes to an hour at the relaxed pace we did today, I'll try to behave during the week. I'll try. You've seen me do this over the 10 years that you have known me. You see me do this all the time. We go up with the weight, we come back down. We go back up, we come back down. And I really know exactly what I'm supposed to do, but now my metabolism is slow and I'm older. But yeah, I'm not going to starve myself. Nope. I'm not going to starve myself. I'm going to eat when I feel hungry, try not to overeat. And move. I got to move in some kind of a way. I cannot just sit here and think that, that the fat is going to roll off my gut. That's not going to happen. But I face the reality that uh, I am not going to jog 10 miles. I can't, I can't do it. I may be able to get to the place where I can walk 
five miles if I do this just right. But I just today, just for the first time in a long time, on purpose, on purpose walk. Come on now. And at the, like I said, at the end of the month, when we go out, Lady Dark Sky, we got to look. I'll be looking though. I'll be looking for those nightgowns too. I know what you like now. I know. I'm glad you showed me that nightgown on the uh, Etsy. And I know to look for a 2X. I know exactly what to look for now. I love those in the wintertime. Or if it's air conditioned inside, it can be in the fall. Or you can still get it for the summer. You can get something shaped the same way, but the neckline is like this. It's like it covers from, from above, above the bust here on down. And it's like it just comes out baggy. I love baggy, comfortable things. When I'm sitting at home, I do not like tight belts. Even when I was skinny and I was a size eight, I do not like anything around my belly. I never have. Mm -mm. I don't like anything digging into my belly. Even when my stomach, my stomach was flat as a pancake. Year, This was years ago, not now, but years ago. I feel like I'm being choked. I don't like it. Come on now, come on now, Nez Lover. We like being we like being comfortable. Like that 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 uh, the, that jumpsuit that I got from. Um, hold on, wait a minute. I need to find, I like this in the summer, like the jump, the, the jumpsuit, remember? It was like a tube top on the top. It's like a tube top with spaghetti straps on the top. And then on the waist down, it's got the pants, but look how wide the pants are. Look how wide that is. Look how much wider than me. So you got this thing, you feel like you feel like you're wearing nothing in this thing. It's like it's like legally legally uh, getting away with <laughs> wearing pajamas. So I like stuff I don't know about you girls but like this. Very very comfortable. Matter of fact, I think on my walk tomorrow, I think I'll wear, well I don't know, I don't want to step on it. I got to pull it up, but yeah. Yeah, this is what we like. We like comfortable, nice and baggy. Come on now. I like the uh -huh. Hold on. Some of you may not, and some of you may recognize this dress. I used to wear this dress in North Carolina. What I like about dresses like this, I like... If I can do it. For Pete's sake, it's got the strap... If there's a hole in the back, there's a hole back there. I'll do it over the clothes. Hold on. This, this dress I've worn since North Carolina. This is a, this is a medium 810 dress. That's what I used to wear. You see it, right? So basically, 
That's why it says 810, because it comes on like this. I'm about to make a complete fool out of myself on live, but I don't care. It goes on. <laughs> it goes on like this. Can I suck my gut in? It goes in like this. And it does the criss, it does the crisscross, the crossover, right? So then you take this in the hole right there. See that hole? You can go up here or down here. And you just take that, take this, put it in that hole, and pull it out here. Is it there? So then you go like this. Ready? Ready? Then you just pull it like this. See that? These kinds of dresses will save your life. Why? Because if you gain weight, you can, you can wear it a little loose. But if you lose weight, you can wear it a little tight. I'm sucking my gut in. You can wear it a little tight. But I used to wear this when I was a size 8. But I'm probably a size 18 now. We, we're not... We're not looking so sexy now, are we? <laughs> yeah, I used to wear this, but I didn't have all this. <laughs> I don't have any butt. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have this. <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> is this TMI? But yeah, the wrap dress. It's called the wrap dress. It was... Uh, I forget which one of those famous uh, designers made the wrap dress. I think it's called a wrap dress. I don't know if it was Dionne von Furstenberg, Coco Chanel. Somebody came up with the idea of this style dress. And we people that lose and gain weight love it because you have control. See, you have control. You, you could, you, if you're skinny, if you're skinny, where's that strap? If you're skinny, you be doing more like that. If you're skinny, but if you're fat like me, you you let you you let that go a little bit. See there, <laughs> let it go for your belly, and then you put this over it like that, and we go like this, and then you go like that. You see that? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, we love this dress, <laughs> but it don't look right. I'm too big. Oh yes, indeed. And then you would simply crisscross. Uh, this, I haven't put this dress on in five years because I know I was fat. I have not put this dress on in about five years. <laughs> but so now take a good look at me now. Get your little furry butt down. Okay, now you see what I look like in this dress, right? There's a seam. You see what I look like, right? I just pretty much go and get away from there right now. Right now. Get your little furry paw down off my clothes. You see what you did? You got stuck. Sorry, y'all. But yeah, I used to wear this. But we kind of look okay. But turn this way. We got all this. And I'm trying to figure out why I get out of breath, right? I'm car I'm carrying this. I am very uncomfortable. Now, this is just me and my house. What did I say? This is just me and my house with my stomach. And the first place we we, the women in my family, were all shaped the same. If I'm going to put you in the carrier if you keep trying to come over here and scratch my clothes. Stop. Sorry, y'all. In my family, the women are, well, my, my sisters are more hourglass shape. I'm more like this. <laughs> Excuse me a second. Come here. Get in there. Come here. Get, get, get in there. Sorry, y'all. And as as I have aged, I cannot be I cannot be the only woman in her sixties 
or late 50s or maybe even late 40s that's dealing with this. This is like this is like a rock where if I want to get if I want to get rid of this it's not like when I was 30. This is like shocking. It's like it don't go nowhere. It's the upper thigh. It's the upper thigh. This is the thing I think a lot of older women are dealing with. This and this. The thigh. The thigh. I call that my upside down triangle thigh. My upside down triangle triangle thigh. But this is the battle right here. I gotta go. I, 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 I. That's got to go. Not because I think I'm, not because I'm trying to be sexy grandma. I'm trying to be, I need to be able to breathe grandma. <laughs> I need to be able to fit my clothes grandma. I'm uncomfortable. When I sit down, this stomach is pushing upward. I'm very uncomfortable. And I'm sorry for the TMI, gentle. If there's any men in here, <laughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen. I apologize because everything's decent and in order, nothing bad. And this right here, this is... This is a size 14. I know that says nine, but it's a size 14. That's a size 14. If we can, if we can get ourselves to the place, take a look at the design so you don't forget. Just remember this. Remember this, okay? A size 14 is a good size for grandma. That means I don't weigh 193 pounds. That means I weigh about 178 pounds. At about 178, 179, maybe 180, I can fit this thing. Size 14. I'm just weird. I just, I'm just built all weird and stuff. I don't know why. And, and like I say, if you get a picture of me and my sister Carmen and my sister Daisy, if you get a picture of the three of us now, we all look, this right here is an all three. This is a size 14. I can't, I don't think I can fit a size 14 at 190, 193 pounds. Right now you are being my Dr. Phyllis's. I think there's mostly women in here. You are being my Dr. Phyllis. See, so you, you are, I, I'm doing this because I was kind of like facing what's going on and what's really happening. You know how you lie to yourself? I'll lose weight next year and fit my clothes next year. You lie to yourself. I lie to myself. I just put it that way. Yeah, this is a size 14 dress. It's a very pretty dress. It's a Goodwill dress. It's a winter dress. I don't think I can fit this dress. I can't, I, 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 I'm about to put it, I'm about to put it over me. I'm about to put it over me. This is a size, you saw it, it's a size 14. And I don't think that I'll be able even to push, pull it down. I don't think I'll be able to pull it down over my gut and my hips. I don't think so. Oh yeah, we can get over the arms. Hold on, let me slide this way. <laughs> Hold on. That's it. This is not going anywhere. <laughs> yep, there you go. Do you think I look sexy? That's a size 14. <laughs> that dress ain't going nowhere. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's a hard reality right there. So, yeah. Just so that when I told you I was a size 18, I was not kidding. <laughs> and that's a pretty dress. I used to wear this dress. 
I used to wear this dress. What happened? I don't know. Felt sorry for myself. Started eating, laying around. So we can either give all these dresses away and buy size 20, or we can lose weight. It's one or the other. This is where I am in my life. This is where I am in my life. Either I go ahead and lose about 15 pounds, get this 15 pounds off my gut, and I can fit this thing. That's it. There's no way around it. I could get away with wearing this, but it don't look good. It don't look right to me. And I think that I am not alone. I do not believe that I am the only one. I do not believe I'm the only one. No, I don't. No, I don't. I bet you there's a lot of ladies in their 50s and 60s that are sitting right in my shoes with me. They're sitting right with their bat wings, <laughs> with their bat wings and their bellies, just like me. Come on now. Oh, hey, I face reality. I'm not embarrassed. I'll just tell you what I'm doing, what I'm, what I'm going to try to do. Why should I be embarrassed? Might as well go ahead and let it out and talk about it. Let it out, talk about it. Yeah, I used to wear this. Hold on. I'm not saying I'm 20 years old. Ain't no way I'm 20. I'm an old woman. And shall we continue? Shall we continue? I used to wear this. This this is from the 80s, maybe. This is from the 80s. 90s, 80s. You'll know immediately by this. But look at this. See that? You see this? Uh, yeah. This used to, this, this used to be all this. Is it there? Oh yes, indeed. Oh, it gets very interesting when you start to not be able to wear certain things. Oh yes, indeed. <laughs> it's kind of scary. <laughs> Hold on now. We're just chit chatting. We're just chit-chatting. Don't get mad. <laughs> now, this is a bigger dress. This dress is a bigger. You can see it's bigger. You can see it. It's bigger. And this is a heavy material, a heavier material. So I can wear this in the winter with some flat, pointy shoes. There is gold. There's like a gold, a gold inlay, whatever you want to call that. It's very pretty. It's a beautiful dress. That's a lovely dress. See how the collar is in the front? Very pretty. How that looks, you know, like that. Very nice. Yeah. And just to go down, as you can see, it goes down. There's my knee. It's long. You know, it's it's not it's not a mini skirt or anything. It's a very nice dress. I love this dress. This is one of my favorite dresses. I think this is a stunning dress. I think you can wear this to a wedding. And guess what? It's a Liz Claiborne dress. Liz Claiborne. I got it. Got this at Goodwill. And it's a size 16. Let's go close. Let's go close so you see I'm not lying. It's a size 16. Now you saw the size 14, right? And you saw that size 14 stopped here. This is a size 16. I haven't tested myself for my exact size, but shall I do? Shall I go ahead and do it publicly? Sure, why not? For your entertainment pleasure. Let's see. I weigh 100. I'm 5 foot 10. I am 5 feet 10 inches tall. I got on the scale. I weigh 100 according to my bathroom scale. Oh, fully lined. A fully lined, my friend. This is a beautiful dress. It's a very expensive dress. I think I got the dress for nine or ten dollars three or four years ago, before the pandemic. So 2019, 2018, we got a hold of this. But this is a size 16. We've just unzipped it. Are we ready for a size 16? A size 14? No, not at all. Size 16. See, I haven't attempted to even try anything because I know 
<laughs> I already know. I'm like, I can't fit that dress. You can, you, you, you can, you can look at it. You can look at a dress. I can't even get it over my boobs. <laughs> you can pretty much look at a dress and know if it's going to fit. Let's slide back. I don't want to struggle in front of me. Hold on. Let's see how far we can get. Size 16. Oh, man, it's like a clamp. It's like wearing a clamp. No way it's going to zip. This is where we sit in a size 16. You see where the problem is, don't you? Oh, that's surprising. Wow. That's not, I would not wear this. I'd have to wear a Spanx and I'd have to stand up wherever I was. I couldn't sit down. Oh, this is a size 16. I'm surprised it went on. Hold on. I don't want to rip it. Hold on, ladies. Hold on. All right. We squeezed. <laughs> we squeezed. Let me come over here. <laughs> Keep in mind, I do have clothes on. I have a skirt and a blouse on. So now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why am I doing this? Why? Oh my gosh, I can't breathe. <laughs> this is a size 16 dress. You saw it, right? Let's step away. Oh, it goes above the knee a little bit. But keep in mind, I got clothes on. We're in a size 16. Okay. I know I look stupid. I got another skirt on, but this is a size 16 dress. I'm in shock that I actually zipped it up. <laughs> but yeah, this, this, this right here, this is a problem. Uh, I have no ass. I barely have an ass. Part of my French. I barely have a butt. <laughs> As you can see, I ba barely, barely, <laughs> I barely have a butt. <sighs> But we managed to squeeze into this thing. So now that you see, that's what I look like. There it is, right? So this will be the test dress. This is the test dress. I'm gonna, I'm officially declaring if now I hope I can get out of it. Oops. This is the test dress. So if we can fit this, if we can fit this dress and, you know, with room where it's a little bit, it's not all tight, we, you know what I mean? This, this right here, this, and the upper part of them thighs, uh, let's see, 93, 83, 83. Thirteen is one hundred and thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen. This is fifteen pounds. This is the fifteen pounds upper thigh and kind of the belly and the pooch, the pooch area. But this here, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's reality. Hold on, let me. I don't want to struggle in front of you. Hold on, we don't want. We don't want to rip it. We don't. We don't want to rip it. Yeah, 14, a 14, can't even get in the 14, but a 16, very tight. So the reality is I'm probably a size 18. I am a size 18, 17 and a half, just say 18. And ain't nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with being a size 18. Ain't nothing wrong with being a size 22. Ain't nothing wrong with nothing being a 2X, a 3X, whatever you are, whatever. Like my sister Carmen, my sister Carmen is about five foot five and she weighs more than I do. Right. So she's, she's really, she's really big and she's fretting on the phone. Oh, I'm so fat. Oh, I don't want you to see. I said, I'm not coming to see your fat. I'm coming to see you. I don't care. I said, I don't care if you're a five. I don't care if you're a five X or two X. 
Carmen, I don't care if you're a 20. I don't care if you weigh 500 pounds, 300. I'm just coming. Sister, I haven't seen you in 10 years. I'm coming to see you. I don't care if you're big, small, medium, whatever. I don't care. But yeah, so that's the test dress. So we got to try this dress on uh, on my birthday. On my birthday, October the 25th is my birthday. So 45 days from now, 45 days from now, we're going to see how I did. Okay. And we got this Liz Claiborne dress from Goodwill. I think it cost me $10. But keep in mind, I got this before the pandemic. So I got this dress about 2019. So I know for a fact that their dresses were $7.99. And back then, their name brand dresses were about $9.99. So I'm venturing to guess I spent about $10 on this dress. So that'll be that'll be the birthday. So if I want to be comfortable on my birthday, if I choose to wear this, I'm going to put this back over here. But yeah. So I want to thank you so much for allowing me, allowing me a place to talk. I want to show you the oldest coat that I bought on my first credit card when I was in my 20s. This is the 19. Welcome back to the 1980s. I will never Get rid of this coat. Sentimental. It may not be stylish now. I don't care. Just think of Dynasty. Lin Linda, what's her name on Dynasty? <laughs> this, is a, this is a coat from the 1980s. I am not kidding. I am not kidding. I was in my 20s. The liner is even torn. I was in my 20s when I bought this bad boy. It's got one, po one of the see-through pockets on the inside and you just button it like this, I believe, I think. Do you remember these coats? Come on, come on, y'all. Or is it the other way? I might be missing a button. Well, there's a button right there. Hold on. Oh, yes, indeed. Welcome to the night. Welcome to the 1980s, my friend. Does this look familiar? Does this, I'm sure this looks familiar to some of you. Do you remember the 80s and the and the big old shoulders? <laughs> can you hear can you hear the, the theme song to Dynasty and the show Dallas in the background as you look at this coat? <laughs> Welcome to 1985, y'all. Yes. Yes, you remember these coats. Oh, I'm not getting, I love this coat. I still wear it. I'm kind of, you can see I'm, I, I barely made it with it. <laughs> Five more pounds and I wouldn't be able to wear it. Oh, welcome to the 1980s, my friend. Shall I turn the back? Oh, yes, indeed. I can, I can feel the pads, the shoulder pads are sliding. <laughs> yes, welcome to the 1980s, boo-boo. Oh, yes, indeed. Jonathan, and you want to know how you know it's really old? Guess what it says on the inside? It says, Jonathan Michael. Jonathan Michael. But you know how you know it's, uh, you know, you know it's old? Because it says, what does it say under his name? What? Come on, chat. What does it say under his name? What does that say? Put it in the chat. What does it say under Jonathan Michael's name that you don't see nowadays? You see it? Put it in the chat, somebody. What does it say under his name? That's it, Nez Lover. Come on, Nez Lover. Yep, one of the few <laughs> that was not made in China. Come on, girls. Oh, this is an oldie but a goodie. I got my first credit card. I don't have credit cards now. I only have a debit card. But back in the day, I had my first credit card. It had $200 worth of credit, and I thought I was a millionaire. <laughs> I thought I was a millionaire, y'all. Last but not least, well, two things. I was married. I called him the cowboy. When I was married to the cowboy, 
The cowboy was uh, Christopher Matthew. Christopher Matthew was six foot five and a half inches tall. One of my husbands. I've been married. I've been married four times. Christopher Matthew, in the cowboy time, he loved the Grand Old Opry. You know, he loved. Uh, let's see. George Jones, Sammy Paycheck, whatever, the Paycheck dude, whatever, I can't think of, Waylon Jennings. And back then, we used to wear Western wear. Me and the husband, I had a cowboy hat. I am not joking. We had cowboy hats. We had Western boots. And this is a, this is a leftover. Let's go to the 90s. Shall we go to the 90s? <laughs> Shall we go? Oh, come, 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 come on down to 1990. Yes, ma'am, 1990. And so, of course, I had to get my Western, my Western coat. Come on now. I had to get my Western coat. Sure did. Sure did. Yeah, that's that is not pleather. That is a leather collar. Back in the 90s, baby. And again, I will never. Get, I, I will never get rid of this coat. 90, 2000, 2010, 2020, 23. This coat is 33 years old. And uh, the other coat is about 43 years old. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> I, I'm not getting you. You're gonna, my son's going to have to give it away when I leave the earth. Give it away to the goodwill. Oh, that's, and that's, that is a very nice coat. Let me see something. Let me put my glasses on. Hold on, people. Oh, I can't see. Oh, you know, it's all worn out. I'm, I was trying to see if it was made in the USA, but it's so old. The ink is worn out. <laughs> the ink is worn out, but it's called Essentials. International Choice. Essentials International Choice. I don't know anything about the company, and I, there's no ink left to see whether that was made in the USA. But yeah, this thing is really, I'm telling you, this thing has been through hell and back. This thing is made very, very well. They don't make stuff like this now. They make, okay, if you want something as good, I know it's not pretty, but it's tough and well-made. And if you want something well-made now, you got to pay a lot of extra money. I have no idea how much I paid for this thing, but I don't think that this is out of style at all because it's just a denim long coat. Uh, full pockets, full pockets. Oh yes, indeed. Remember pockets, full pockets. Well, they don't make stuff like this unless you're going to pay extra money. You're going to pay a lot of money. I know it's not the fanciest thing. And I don't know why I'll just go on with it. Let's keep going. Might as well just keep going and show you one more thing. This is the 80s. It's got to be. Uh-oh. This has got to be the 80s by looking at it, but I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It, does, it doesn't bother me that it is the 80s. If this coat would just stay in there and not embarrass me. Now, I might be able to fit this. You can tell it's the 80s just by looking at it. That's the, It's got to be the 80s or the 90s. And it's got, you've seen this before. Some of you have. And this may look kind of plain. Some people might say that's an ugly, that's an ugly dress, Lynn. That's all right. But it's kind of a foam material, nothing special about it. And it's, uh, it's, um, It's fully lined. You don't have to wear a slip. It's fully lined. And again, it's a size 14 as well. And I got that around the time I got the other, the, not, not the, anyways, I'm going to stop. I'm going to, I'm over talking. That's a Calvin Klein dress. And I paid seven or $8 pre pandemic. So about 2019, 2018, and yes, it's out of style, but I don't care. It's just a basic, a basic dress that you dress up 
or you dress down. This uh, this is sewn onto it. If I wanted to make it look less dainty looking, I could take this off, but I will not. I will not. I like it. But that's built into it. So you wear some gold earrings or whatever. It's a size 14, but it stretches. I'm going to put this on. Got You know I got to do it. I got to do it. <laughs> Even if it doesn't go on, but it stretches. It stretches. And it's a size 14. Did I say size 14? Yeah, I think it says a size 14, right? It says size 14. Now, the other dress that was a 14, the other dress that was a 14 had no mercy. <laughs> it had no mercy. What do I mean? There was no give. There was no stretch. It was a real, original size 14. They've They've added a little bit of material. You know, the 14s now are a little bit bigger in my humble opinion because people were gaining weight. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I believe. But I digress. So this is a, a Calvin Klein foam. It's like a foam. It's, you know. This should fit because it stretches. That's the only, it's not because I'm skinny but it should fit because of the, the material that it, because of the material. So we'll just do this right in front of you. Yep, it's gonna fit, but it ain't gonna look good. No, it ain't it's gonna fit and it's gonna fit tight. You see, you notice this is a newer, I, I believe this is like a newer dress meaning year-wise, and I think there's more material. I'm just telling you. Because the other size 14, you notice, would not fit. This equates, this size 14, what they're calling a 14, equates to this size 16, because you notice how they fit almost the same? Look at it. See there? It fits like this. So that proves my point. I believe that they made the sizes a little bit bigger, in my opinion. They they recognize. But I digress. Let's zip it up. Let's see if we can zip it up. Yep. They're saying it's a size 14. It's a size 16. Trust me. Trust me. I know, I know every inch of fat. I know every, every inch of fat and flab on my body. And I know what a 16 feels like in a 14. They're saying it's a, a 14. It's really a 16. They just added more material to feel sorry for the women that we were eating too much. And we all, as Americans, are getting bigger. And so they started making the sizes bigger. So we would not feel bad. Come on now. That's the truth. That's just the truth. But this... Could be another example of put this on on your birthday and see. But yeah, that's that's a foam, like a foam kind of material, and that's got extra. That's a. That, can I pull back my wrinkles? <laughs> that's got <laughs> that's got extra like a, a extra stretch. And it this thing is hot. This is a winter dress. Ain't no way I can wear this in the summer, unless you. Pull me out of an air-conditioned vehicle into an air-conditioned room. This thing is hot as heck. Woo. I'm trying to pull it down. I don't want to break anything. And there you have your trip down memory lane and me facing the truth of my exact size. My exact size in my humble opinion, is a size 18. I am at about an 18. And a, 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 a snug 18 and a comfortable 20. 
I can this off without falling down. So yeah, we're looking at about size 18. And I, I'm telling you, like a, a nightgowns and other things that Lady Dark Sky sent me and dresses, a two, I think a 2X is kind of like an 18. Like a 2X is like an 18, maybe. I'm not sure. But that's what it seems like to me in, in trying all these clothes on. But yeah, I think we have some pretty nice looking dresses. And I think that I, I can I can do this thing. Getting into this thing with less weight, um, we can we can be, we can look decent in this. I can look decent in this with with about eight less pounds on my body or nine pounds. If nine pounds of, of nine pounds of this. We're off. This dress would look okay. Yeah. But yeah, these are the testing dresses. So you saw them for yourself. So either one of these, hopefully, I like this a lot. This thing is hot. It's nice for wintertime, even though it's a cream, it's more of a cream color. It is not a bright white. In person, it looks like a cream color nearing the white color. And that's a built-in El Cheapo fake uh, faux necklace there. This like this reminds me so much of the 1980s. Child, you could put this in that 1980s. I'd be going back in time. I'd be going back in time. People be looking at me and laughing at me, but I don't care. Yeah, if you took if you had this dress on, and you put this over it like this, boo boo. Welcome to Dynasty and the show the show of Dallas. This is what Linda Evans, this is Linda Evans on Dallas. <laughs> all day, all day, boo-boo. That's Dallas right there. That, that, that's Di the show Dynasty, the show Dallas. Oh, my gosh. Uh -uh, I'm getting rid of that. No. I know I may look ridiculous, but. Mm -mm. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh-oh. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I certainly need your help, Lord. I sure do. Help me, Lord. Help me work it through, Father God. I need you. Can't do nothing without you. I cannot do anything without the Lord. My friend. But yeah, it's a wake-up call. I don't want to face my reality. But if I don't face my reality, I won't do nothing. If I don't just look at myself in the mirror and put them clothes on and face the reality, I'll just, I'll just keep going. I'll just keep going. If I don't do something, shame on me. It's up to me. It's up to me. You just make up your mind one day. You just get up one day. But I'm telling you, after I put that oil on myself... After I showed you that little jar earlier in the broadcast, I put that anointing oil on me, even on my cat, my doors and windows, and prayed over myself. I started to feel better. And some just said, it's time for you to face reality. It's time for you to do something. Well, I'm old. Don't matter if you're old. Time for you to do something. So what are you going to do? Either you do, nobody can do it for you. It's like I'm arguing. It's like I'm arguing and really trying to be my own cheerleader. And I think the Lord's trying to help me to just go ahead and face your reality. What do you want to do? You can stay right where you are and be just fine. You sit there and be all uncomfortable all day long if you want, Lynn. But if you want to feel a little bit better, don't complain to me. When I, I, I'm just trying to get you to face yourself and make the decision if you want to do something. It's no big deal. The world's not going to stop moving in a circle. The world isn't going to start uh, moving on its axis because you're you're uh, a size 20 or you're a size uh, size 16. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, Lynn. You're the only one that's got to be concerned about it because it's you. Yeah, that's a harsh that's a that's a hard reality to take sometimes, you know. We have to do it. We got to do it. Can't nobody do it for us. And I I have talked to my younger sister about it. 
it's up to her for her. Um, it's a bit worse for her, but she has to do it. I can't make her. I can't make her do it. Let's see if anybody else come in. Hey, Stephen. They found a garden sanctuary. And then she says, Nez Lover, it really depends on the designer. The fact, come on, Nez Lover. Nez Lover knows. You're speaking. Come on now. It really depends on the designer, the fabric, and type of garment. 118 is not the same. Exact, I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting, I'm, I'm going like this. That's it. Lynn, did you read my comments earlier? Pastor Tony Evans. Hold on, hold on, Vernell. Thank you for coming back, Vernell. Jean jackets never go out of style, says Sister Vernell Levingston. Don't care how old, exactly. I got a lot of old ones, too. Come on, Nez Lover. I, got, I had that denim coat with the leather collar, she says. And then Nez Lover, I wore my grandfather's trench coats. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And sports coats. There's nothing wrong with that. Some men's wear we can wear. And grandma's costume jewelry in the 80s. Exactly. Because you can't really tell. I know they say that when a man is wearing a button-down shirt, they... The buttons are on the right or left side, and the women, the women's button-down shirt are on the opposite side. I don't know if that's still true today, but when a man wears a suit and he's got a light blue, a white button-down shirt before he puts his tie on, that button kind of button-down shirt, it's like it buttons from the left or right. Back in the 80s anyway, and then the woman's was buttoned from the other side. The buttons were located on opposite sides. And that's, I mean, that's how you could tell. Back in the day, I have no idea what these people might be trying to save money and do them all the same and maybe cut them a little different for women. Yeah, a lot of people did that, Nez Lover. You can wear a man's trench coat. You can wear certain little items from men. Yes, you can. And blend them in with the things that you have. Especially that trench coat, that raincoat, Carhartt jacket. You can get away with that, girls. We can get away with that. I want to see what Nez lover. It depends on how the clothes are cut. That's right, now. Okay, I, I would add a glamorous white fur stole, rhinestone jewelry, and an elegant updo, sparkling hair, come on now, hair ornaments, and cream-colored pumps. I don't know if I have the cream-colored pumps. I think I have some tan pumps, a light tan pump. I might have all the other stuff. Do the twist, Lynn. He. I should have. When I fit that dress on my birthday, I will. Marquise Payne, don't get mad, get glad, lock freezer bag. <laughs> Come on now, Brother Marquise. The cow ate the cabbage, you crazy. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Marquise. You're gorgeous, thank you. I'm looking for what you said, Nez Lover. Hold on. I, I'm sorry. Uh, not Nez Lover. Vernell Levingston says something about the pastor. Yep, the wrap dress. Come on, Vernell. Vernell got it. She said, yes, it's called the wrap dress. That that uh, that uh, animal print dress that, you know, did you, you one over the other? Yes. They don't make it with the holes in it like that anymore. If you find one of those, <coughs> you got to go. Excuse me.
Yeah, I need a foundation garment. Like I'm telling you, Nez Lover. She says, yeah, body briefer hides a multitude. Exactly. Dion Von Furstenberg. That's it, Felicia Quinn. I believe it was her. One of them, one of them, whatchamacallit, one of them invented that thing. And boy, us ladies of different sizes or you're in between size, you know, you weren't eight, you enjoyed your vacation, you ate all the desserts, you had, you went to the buffet line when you went on a cruise, you know, you ate, you, you know, you went to it, whatever you did. And so what you do is you get out, you have two or three of them wrap dresses up there, and then you had a jacket, like you had one, you know, a busy, a kind of print. And then you wore the wrap dress. Maybe you had a little tiny tummy. You put on a few, put on five, seven pounds, you know, and then you put that wrap dress on a little loose, you know, and then you would put that jacket that, that, uh, the dynasty TV show, <laughs> the dynasty, or like I was saying earlier, that Texas show Dallas and with the big old, big old pads. And then you look good. You were, you were scraped. I mean, straight, but I'm just joking, saying you look straight. You got it straight. Shimon here. Yes. I thank you for putting the cash app in, Nez Lover. I'm going back in the chat. Hey, Candace Jackson, the chosen one and the awoken one. Thank you, Candace Jackson, the chosen one and the awoken one for stopping in and paying us a visit. Thank you so much, Sister Candace. What happened to the to the pastor? I'm going back, 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 but I don't see it. Go way back. Grandma Lynn, if you come across some of those old fashioned, not, yeah, okay, we talked about her nightgowns. We're gonna go live and do that. <coughs> and she talked about the native deodorant. Jazzy Joyce blessed us by coming in and saying hello. Pre-retirement days, uh, upgraded membership to Fantabulous Friends number three. Thank you for that, for being a member of my channel. Then Lady Dark Skies shared that link to the, the nighty gowns that she likes. Brother Marquise, you're talking about the weather. Pre-retirement days is saying that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be... Uh, it's cold here at night in central Minnesota. We had 35 degrees, or she didn't say degrees, but had 35 a few, a few days ago at night. The hummingbirds left that day. Yeah, the weather is kind of odd, but I think they uh, manipulate the weather. In some degree, you can, you can, say, you can say underneath my, uh, my, hat, my cap that there's a tinfoil hat and I'm weird. But they can seed. You know, cloud seeding has been for, for years. She does look demonic, Carol Hamill, as far as that Senator Dianne Feinstein. I've often thought this, and I could be wrong about people, about human beings and, and their frame. You know, whatever God put you in, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever God, whatever God put you in, right? That if a person was really, really wicked and just secretly really evil, like a famous movie star, a pastor, a senator, a king, a queen, when they get old, I forget who that was. I was saying that about somebody else. We were looking at a picture of someone. And we were talking about that sometimes the demon that's running them, the demon that's running the ungodly, I mean the wickedly ungodly, they know about God and they want to give God the middle finger. They want nothing to do. Matter of fact, they mock Jesus. They mock us and hate us. You know, that whole nine yards. Uh, I'm talking about an evil person. They start to look like the demon that runs them. They st it starts to manifest even in the way that they look when they get really, really old. And I saw the first picture of Diane Feinstein, the very first picture when she 
first got back three uh 30 days ago, three months ago. I'm looking at, I'm looking at that one eye. I'm just like looking at her shell. I'm looking at her shell. I'm saying, my goodness, that's kind of like the Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland looks like a demon. Kenneth Copeland is looking like what he is or what's running him. It starts to manifest even in the way they look. That's kind of weird, ain't it? Isn't that kind of weird? It kind of it can't even hide itself. When it gets old, the 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 that 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 flesh, that that part of the mind that blocks everything, that 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 thing I was talking about earlier in the broadcast, the filter. The part of the filter that won't let you kind of be insulting about an ugly dress we described earlier. Yeah, girl, that woman has got wearing a dress. That dress is so ugly. It's so ugly. We say it's back in the day, we say it was ugly. Dang, that's an ugly dress. But we say, well, if that's what you want, I wouldn't wear that dress. But you know, if that's what you like, that's what you like. That's the filter that comes through us. We don't want to kind of hurt their feelings, even though that dress looks crazy. But the filter, even not even in the way in the way that they just don't hold back their word, they don't think to hold back a few words or they don't think to hold back the words that would reveal how they really are. That they're really wicked and demonic. When you're younger, the filter is nice and thick. That veil is up kind of tight. But when you get old, you 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 your 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 shell which your brain is inside of gets a little weak and stuff starts to eke out, not only in what you say, but how you look, but how you look, it starts to eke out. It can't hold itself. Can't hold it back no more. Oh yes, indeed. <laughs> One moment, please. One moment, please. Oh, yes, indeed. Give you an example. If I can get this picture to come up, that would be great. That would be great. Come on, come on. Come on, show us. Come on. Oh, that's a good picture right there. Hold on. Oops. Yes, Lord. There it is. Come on, pop up for mama. Come on, my, my cheap cell phone is denying me. There we go. No, I don't want that. Here we go. Yeah, there you go. Take a look at that face. Look at it. That's Kenneth Copeland. I think he's 90 something. You see there? You see that? <laughs> I'll get you my little pretty and your little dog too. <laughs> Don't you feel like he's going to say that? <laughs> yes, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's how I feel like he's just going to judge. He's going to get me. <laughs> Oh, let me stop. <laughs> yeah, he's starting, to, he's starting to look like what he is. And this one, too. This one, too, is starting to show that, too. It's kind of scary, man. It's like the sister was saying earlier. I was watching a sister on a short video. She said there used to be this veil. But now God has removed the veil, and we're starting to see things. We're starting to see things in people for who they are. Where is this guy here? Real quick. Oops. <laughs> This man, you can see it. It's different now. Let's see. Give me a good. Yes. Yes, Dracula. Yes. You too. See, it's kind of like. It's kind of like. Yeah, that one there. That's Joel Osteen. Yes. Yes. There's Mr. Osteen. Man, his lips must hurt from, look at the smile. That, that, that's a fake smile. That's, that's a fake smile. You see that smile? That ain't real. See? Let's just take a look at what it really is now. I look at things a little bit different. 
Oh, yes, indeed. That's Mr. Olstein. That man is just as wicked. That man is just as wicked as can be. Yes, he is. And say what you want. Get mad. Go, go ahead and get mad at Grandma. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on now. When the world loves you, my friend, when the world loves you, guess who Joel Olstein and Mrs. Olstein are with? Oh, who's that with them, my friends? That's Joel Olstein and his wife. Who's in the picture? Who's in the picture, boo boo? Who do you see? Who that? Who that right there? Who that right there, boo boo? And see that? I told you. They all know each other. What did grandma tell you a, a, a few days ago? Watch out, Kabbalah. Yeah, there she is. She got her foot in everything, that evil woman. That's an evil woman right there. Oh, she's got her foot in everything. Well, holly, well hallelujah. Hallelujah, y'all. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, here they are again. Oh, yes. Hold on. Let me make that bigger for you. Oh, yes, indeed. Birds of a feather. If the world loves you, watch out. Watch out. Oh, yeah, that's a good expression on his face right there. Hold on. Let's see if we can get a nice. You can see that devil good. Yeah. Oh, yes. Look at his expression. Look at his expression. Look at his eyes. Take a go. <laughs> Yeah, you got the warlock and the witch right there. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Watch out now. Watch out, y'all. That's that's what's pastor. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> I told you. I've been beep, 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 beep. I've been chirp, 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 chirp. I've been telling you that they all know each other. You don't let me let this cat out of the thing. You don't you don't think that Oprah would know the preacher and you don't think the basketball player knows the singer. They know each other. It's a club. Oh, before we go, shall we talk about that for a few minutes? Shall we yep yep? <laughs> oh, all them demons, all them demons know each other. Yes, they do. See, you don't you don't think like Pastor Joel Olstein. And then Oprah. That's multimillionaires. They, 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 yeah, they're rubbing them, they're rubbing them elbows, boo. They're, they're, they're rubbing elbows. <laughs> you better wake up. Oh, the devil is real. Ooh, the devil is real and running everything. You better wake up. Goodness great. Oh, yeah, all over the place with Oprah. Oh, yes, indeed. Hold on now. Yes. Yeah, hold on. I'll stop in I'll stop in a minute. And there's a nice close up of Mrs. Osteen. You're not really do she said you're not really doing it for God, but face it, you're doing it for yourselves. She said that. You're not really doing it for yourself or for God. You're doing it for yourself. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, she's got her broomstick. She's got, stop, boo-boo. She's got her broomstick parked in the back of the sanctuary. Yeah, she flies out. She flies out of the top of that church and flies home. <laughs> and your little dog, too. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Lynn, you need to stop. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> you wait. Give it some time. Stuff's coming. I've been chirp chirping and you know it. Stuff is going to come out. The veil is bloop. God is tossing down that veil because God is trying to get these people to stop idol worshiping. God is trying to stop folks from idol worshiping. Stop worshiping Beyonce. Stop wor worshiping Oprah. Stop worshiping. I don't care how kind and sweet Denzel Washington. I don't care who they are. 
Don't, it's nothing wrong with watching a good, a good semi okay movie. You're a human being. We watch a movie, but don't ever, don't ever put them on that pedestal, boo boo. God is very jealous for His people. It's okay to admire and have respect for a wonderful marriage if they happen to be in show business and they appear to be a decent couple and nice people. That's wonderful. God bless you and your wife because there are. A, there's a little. There's there's some people that are genuinely saved. They make a movie here and there, but they're not. They're not well as well known as the others. They go in and make their money and they go home and they don't want anything to do with the the parties. That's why they're not. They don't. They they're not worth four hundred million. They're worth thirty or twenty million, and they just go in. They make the movie. They do the trailer, they do appearances. Hello, yes, it's my latest movie, and they go home. They don't want to hang around at the overnight parties or the parties in the middle of the woods somewhere or the Epstein Island, let's do nasty stuff to children and nasty stuff to preteen uh, party. They don't want to do that. A small percentage do not do that. Oh, yes, indeed. But God, God wants to be uh, first on our list. Put God first, then go ahead with your children, your husband, your wife, whatever order that you do in the human. But don't ever put him in the back burner to any, to any, to any, uh, to any of these clowns, to any of these clowns. I said it. I said it to any of these clowns. They're people just like you and me who just happen to go from one to the other and people would like and sponsors back them up. And people, people, human beings, whoever we are, buying their books and the things that they make and watching their shows and maybe buying some of the products that are on during the commercials or Oprah's favorite things, whatever. We're the ones that got them where they are. But then there's some background deals to Satan in the back. If you want to, you want to super duper just blow all the way up. That's why every time I would turn around at right after Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart did this. He was on, he's on all these different commercials. Right after this, he blew, he blew, he blew up. Yeah, after, after you do, after he did this, after Kevin Hart, this would just clear up. Yeah, after, at, oh, hold on. After Kevin Hart put that dress on, after Kevin Hart put that dress on, that's supposed to be like a pope, like he's a female pope. After he did that, you you kept seeing that man's face and everything. A after he did that. There, there's there, there's a there, there, that, that, that demonic part. There's different levels to fame, boo boo. He's on that upper level. He had to do something. He had to do something. He had to be demasculated. He had to be shamed and demasculated. That's what they do to our men. Come on here now. Come on here now. How you think you get way up there like that? Come on now. Come on now. Uh, let's see. Excuse me. <coughs> Just a moment, please. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, sir. That's that's why, yeah. Uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson as the Tooth Fairy. The Rock, that's The Rock. Yep, yep, just go ahead, just go ahead and do this. Just do this one thing. You're going to be a billionaire. Yeah, just, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, it's a club, all right. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me, boo-boo. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me. Oh, yes, indeed. You don't have to believe me. Don't believe me. Just say, that's a coincidence. 
And that's a coincidence. Uh, uh, Lynn, that's a coincidence. Uh, let's see. That's a coincidence. Yeah, that's a coincidence. Yeah, that's a coincidence. That's Shaquille O'Neal. That's a that's Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq. That's Shaq. Yep, that that's that's just so coincidence that you got so much money. You didn't have to do nothing special. You didn't have to do nothing special, Shaq, to become famous. There's Shaq, Shaq. That's Shaq. All eight feet tall of them or whatever. That's Shaquille. No, that's Shaquille O'Neal. That is Shaquille O'Neal, the basketball player. You think I'm joking? That's him. That's Shaquille. Get back, boo boo. Oh, that's all right, but that's okay. That's all right. Let's do the split screen for you. Here you go. Here's what he really looks like. There he is, split screen. There he is on the split screen. Yeah. Oh, no, you ain't got to do nothing. No, it's not demonically run. No, it's okay. It's not It's not demonically run, demasculating and all that. No, it's not. Why they all got to put on a dress? Why? Why does basketball player Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley and all those commercials, why does Charles Barkley have to do this? That's Charles Barkley, his friend, the basketball player, in a full dress and heels. Why? See, I told you that things would be introduced. This was years back, that things would be introduced as a joke. It's supposed to be funny as a joke. But now I watch a video of a man going into a woman's bathroom looking like a man. He just put a wig on his head. And he walked into a woman's uh, bathroom at McDonald's, but he looked like a hundred percent man. He just put a wig on his head and just went into the ladies' room. I told you about the increment. I told you Satan was very subtle. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe. You can call me dumb and stupid, and you're wrong, Lynn. You're wrong. But we we want to introduce, you know. Hold on. Ah, yes, I'm on a tirade. What's that man's name? What's that guy's name? That's Wesley Snipes. <coughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, protect me, Father. Protect me, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ for showing the truth. Protect me, Lord, for showing the devil for who he is. Protect me, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. There's Wesley Snipes. Yeah, there's Wesley. Yeah, notice, notice it's all black men. Yeah, demasculate the black man. Mm -hmm. Who in the world do you think you're kidding? Who do you think you're kidding? And then he went all the way to it, and he got Patrick Swayze and that other Spanish actor. Oh, yeah, let's get all of them. Let's get all of them. There, there's, there, there's Patrick Swayze. Oh, my finger. There's Patrick Swayze. That's Patrick. Oh, the time of my life. And I never felt this way. Be get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. I never felt this way before. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Hey there. And I forget, uh, Leguizamo. Leguizamo, another dude right there. And there they are in that movie. Oh, yes, indeed. There they are. Mm-hmm. Who you who do who in the who in good golly jeepers do you think you're kidding? Who do you think you're kidding? Oh yes, and diddly D. It was called Wong Fu. Was the movie called Wong Fu? Yep. And now just one more, and I'll shut up. 
It's a pair, yeah. This has been going on for a while. What's his name? Oh, yeah. Mm, I don't think I'll be able to find this. I'm, I'm hoping that I can so I can show you how far back we're going. Oh, uh, where are you? I don't know if they'll even have it. They kind of sweeped and cleaned it. Yes, sir. Come on now, just show it to me. Show it to me. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> I had to baptize my cat. Come on, show me that picture. This is what I've been trying to show you for a while. Now it's taking its time loading. Cagney and Drake recruiting la da la. Where is that? There we go. It says in these films. Now I don't know which. Oh, there he is. There he is. Let me kind of try to make it big. Okay. Wait a minute. This is James Cagney from, he started in the 30s. Remember him? Yeah, she. Remember that? James Cagney. Yeah, she. You know how all these comedians in the 50s would imitate him? Yeah, she. Brrr. You know, Jimmy Cagney, tough guy. But that's him. I know you're sick of me right now. I know you're sick of me now. I know there he is, Jimmy Cagney. And then he did that USA kind of, uh, that, that uh, I'm a Yankee doodle dandy, a dan -na -na, and he tap dance in that movies in the 50s or 60s, whatever. Here's how he started. Now, there, there is all, there they are, and I don't know what year is this. They don't say what the year is. Okay, bad, la, 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 la. Just a moment. Okay, born in 1899. Blah, 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 blah. Talents for performance, blah, 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 blah. Oh, here it is. It says, despite his subsequent reputation, meaning as a gangster and a tough guy, it said, his first paid theater role was as a chorus girl. In the all male 1990, 1919 review, every, every sailor. I don't know if you can see that. But anywho, here he is. I'm gonna I'm gonna move in on his face. But that is James Cagney. Here's the big picture. Here's the whole picture with all them. Those are all men. And then we want to make it big. And there he is right there in the middle. That's, yeah, she, yeah, I'm going to rub you all out. You better give me your money. Where's our pay? Arr, I'm a tough guy. Arr. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, see, yeah the devil, humili hu that's, that's almost like a humiliation ritual, if you will. Oh, yes, indeed. I was telling you that. I said, you know what? Nobody's going to believe me. I, I I don't even know if I can find a picture of Jimmy Cagney when he, his first role was that of uh, portraying a woman. But now I'll shut up. I just had to make my point. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the Satan can give you what you want. He can give you things. But he's not allowed to do certain things he has to ask permission over certain things. Yes, he does. He, he, he just he's just the underling. Satan is like an underling in comparison to our king. They, they, they're not even on the same uh, say uh, they're not even on the same planet, let's just say so to speak. See, we have to remember that the devil is uh, was created by God, not initially as Satan, but as but as Lucifer, the son of the morning. He's a created being. People give him too much credit because of all the wicked and disgusting and nasty and terrible murderous, molesting, raping, killing, destroying, you know, ruining marriages, things that he does, ruining uh, uh, things like uh, 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 Auschwitz and 
what the Nazis did and what they did in, uh, uh, in African slavery and uh, all the different the diseases that were created by men for money. I will create a, a, allegedly, I will create something and then I will give you the solution to something. I'm getting paid on both ends. I'm getting paid on both ends. I'm going to make you sick and then I'm going to give you the solution. Again, I'm going to make you sick, sick and I'm going to give you the solution. The 1990 flu. The 1990 